The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Monday morning, 8.30 a.m. Hope everyone had a great weekend out there. 60 minutes to go until the opening bell. And folks, we got markets in positive territory. Let's kick it off. We got the S&Ps up 27 points right now, trading at 36.80. You back things up to even just where we were early, early on Friday, or we had that acceleration. We got a chart of the S&Ps up here to the middle of the day on Friday as well. Things looked a little bleak. We were down there at about 36.20, 36.25 again in the middle of the day. Right now, we're trading 36.80 in the S&P for some context. When you put it up on the daily, you're talking about 1% away from all-time highs made five days ago, December 9th, 37.14. We're going to open higher this morning on the S&Ps. Higher across the board, jump into the other indices. NASDAQ, we saw a little bit of a sell-off here. You got a, a story out there from Bloomberg, I believe, talking about the EU potentially fining some of these tech companies 10% of their revenue if they start using their platforms, etc., cetera, to... Um, Stifle competition, to put it lightly. Um, you're seeing a reaction on some of those tech stocks. I mean, jumping around real quick, there's Google. I mean, small, small action. Facebook, you see a little bit of an, a reaction there as well. Um, nonetheless, S&Ps, NASDAQ up by 44. The Dow catching a little bit of a bid today. We were down at 29,624 early on Friday. We're currently approaching 30,200 at 30,001. 178 in the Dow and the Russell up more than a full percent at 1933 right now. Jumping around to commodities, quite the week in commodities last week. We got crude showing strength yet again above $47 at $47.24. Man, there was an awesome article from Bloomberg out there over the weekend talking about a group of traders during the flash to negative prices. Now, it doesn't show up negative on this contract because of the rolling, but we were back here April 20th was the day. Now, this April 20th was the day. I, I know it now from reading this article. I'll try and find it after the break. Had a group of about nine traders that banked two-thirds of a billion dollars, folks. You're talking about $660 million. I'll try and find it. Uh, the, the the trade that they had going on is that they were going to, they had locked in to buy the oil contract at the close of action on April 20th, well, that day, folks, it ended at minus $38. Okay, so they were the buyers at the end of the day. So what did they have to do? They had to sell throughout the day to offset that position. Okay, so they had already initiated a position where they were going to buy at the end of the day, whatever that price is. It's a high-risk trade for sure. Um, and then they were selling to counteract that order that they already had in there throughout the day. But what was happening that day is that the acceleration of selling was pushing the prices even further and even further to negative prices, which was then going to be their buy price. So not only were they able to sell oil during the day and get money for that, but they then they had locked in a buy at the end of the day, which ended up being minus $38. So they got paid at the end of the day $38 per barrel as well. I'll pull up the article. Remarkable. Um, but – it's very close to manipulation, and uh, it doesn't look like it's going to happen probably because it's very difficult to prove those types of cases. I'll pull up the article. You basically have to have emails in writing that the person says, I'm trying to manipulate the market for it to stick in court. Um, otherwise, how do you prove that they're just not offsetting that trade? It's a legitimate argument. Nonetheless, oil, strong, 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 continuing that trend up 1.5% today. Gold contract pulling back a bit off about $15 right now. I got a Fibonacci retracement up here. You go from the March lows to the highs of 2089. We bounce off, the, off that 50% retracement. We're hovering right at about the 382 line in gold, putting it on a 15 minute for the action this morning, trading at 1828. Silver's down about three cents at 2405 natural gas continuing to rise off the lows we had last week of 236 we're trading at 268 natural gas got to check in on bitcoin how about that acceleration folks up a thousand 
$1,100 now to $19,160. And we'll jump to notes and bonds. We're pulling back right now. The yield on the 10-year, we're talking about 0.933%. The 10 years off 10 ticks at 137.24. And the 30 years off a full point right now at 172.21. And we'll wrap it up with the VIX. As this market chugs higher, the VIX trading at 22.57. We got above 25 on that VIX. Back it up to last week when um, Friday, the acceleration to lower prices middle of the day, and then we ended it at about 23. All right, what else we got going on? We got a lot of action out here today, folks. We'll start it off with the vaccine rolling out today. Um, the first deliveries, FedEx UPS began shipping 2.9 million doses of the vaccine from Pfizer to hospitals, clinics, and other distribution points across the country. And that's talking about fr frontline workers, those with priority access, the first doses, Pfizer and BioNTech's virus. You're talking about 2.9 million of them. They're going out today. A big day in history, folks, as we look to get over this pandemic result. I tell you, folks, um, you know, you need big numbers of these vaccinations, you know, and um, I myself am going to take it when it becomes available because because if if we all don't take it, folks, this is our life. Just just to encapsulate everything. Everybody has a choice, okay? But we gotta make those choices to move forward. All the data suggests it's safe. You might have a little bit of discomfort on the day of. The second shot seems like it might be a little bit of discomfort as well, some chills and whatnot. Seems to go away in about a day, as opposed to, of course, the uh, ramifications of the virus itself, much harsher than that. So I expect to take it, folks. We need some big numbers. I mean, you had Dr. Fauci out there talking about uh, I believe it was last week at some point or maybe even on Sunday. Uh, I was reading articles this weekend saying, you know, even if we get 75 to 80 percent of people taking this virus, this vaccine, you're still talking about six to nine months and potentially even a year to complete normalcy in this country. If we start getting where we're only pushing about 40 to 50 percent of people taking the vaccine, you're going to experience years, years to get to herd immunity. So I encourage you to look at the facts, folks. Look at the data. We're traders out there. You're data driven. You know, it looks like they trusted the scientists on this one. FDA approved, highly effective. So I'll be taking it. We'll see. I'll put it out there on TFNN for all to share, try and get some good information out there. Because, folks, the Internet, it's a cesspool. Facebook, it's the cesspool of all cesspools. And the information out there is going to be um, pretty dire, I imagine, when the vaccines start rolling out in terms of anecdotal experiences from God knows what talking about what happened. But nonetheless, there's Pfizer's action up a bit today at about 4146 right now. I believe it's BNTX is BioNTech. Yeah, BNTX is their symbol. Down a bit actually on the rollout there. Moderna shares up a bit to 163.88 this morning. All right, we're gonna jump a bit because I'll tease what we're coming back with. Not a good day for uh, government agencies and big time tech as they're all getting hacked, it looks like this morning. Google services, including Gmail, YouTube, suffer massive outage, uh, notable across many platforms. So you had experiencing wide ranging outrage, outages, pulled up YouTube today, that wasn't even working, have not checked my Gmail account yet. Pretty remarkable when we are moving to a world living on the cloud. And I can't imagine what's going to happen one day when we wake up and that cloud is inaccessible over a period of X amount of hours. Stay tuned, folks. We'll pull up those charts when we get right back. Hi, folks. This is Tom O'Brien. Are you looking to buy or sell gold, silver, platinum, coins, or bullion? We can help. At Tiger Precious Metals and Stones, we specialize in the buying and selling of gold, silver, as well as collectible U.S. and foreign coins. We not only buy our unwanted or broken jewelry, but you can trade that in for gold and silver coins, too. Call Indy now at 727-329-8245 for a quote over the phone and to lock in the current market price. Call us now at 727-329-8245. TFNN has just launched our Tiger Dollar Holiday Sale. For a limited time, we've doubled all the Tiger Dollar bonuses where you can now get up to a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase. Tiger Dollars are good for all TFNN newsletters, webinars, and services, and never expire. Whether you're a current subscriber or just thinking of signing up for any TFNN products in the future, this is a great time to get your Tiger Dollars. Happy holidays from all of us at TFNN. Hi folks, this is Tom O'Brien. 
The printing presses are working 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The U.S. deficit has risen 200 percent in one year with no end in sight. The markets are looking for an additional stimulus bill to get us through this once in a generation pandemic. There is no free lunch, folks. The more stimulus dollars put into the marketplace, the less your dollar is worth each and every day. This is the time to protect yourself with a portion of your portfolio in the metal market. The Gold Report comes out each Monday morning. I bisect and dissect the dollar, silver, gold, the XAU, and the HUI. The Gold Report is a long-term hedge against the dilution of your buying power. The U.S. has put more than $6 trillion into the marketplace in the last six months, with more expected in the next few months. The market did and does need the stimulus, but it will have long-term implications on our buying power. The Gold Report comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Go to TFNN.com and order the Gold Report now. Protect your buying power. Order the Gold Report now. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps positive by 24 points right now, trading at 36.78. You see where we were, though, at about 8 a.m. We were about seven points higher in the S&P, pulling back a bit from about 36.85. All right, jumping around to the next story. So we talked about how Google, Gmail, YouTube all having some problems this morning. Some problems at the Treasury Department as well, folks. The U.S. government agencies hit by suspected Russian hackers. Uh, global intrusion campaign is how it's called here. Um, a flaw in the update of a software company, cybersecurity firm FireEye said, which the Washington Post reported was a breach by Russian government hackers. So the attack was made on systems within the U.S. Treasury and Commerce Department. Interesting, this story being read in light of today, completely different story that YouTube, Google, Gmail all having problems as well. You see how hard this is when we're managing a world online, folks. FireEye, they got hacked like last week, they said, from a state actor. They are a cybersecurity firm. When you're talking about huge, huge public, I mean, they're one of the biggest ones out there, folks. There's the drop-off on Tuesday when they revealed that they got hacked from 1566. We're down about 10% still from that price tag of FireEye. You see what happened there. But this is a different deal, talking about this was within the U.S. Treasury and Commerce Department and those of other government agencies in a breach that started months ago. They include snooping on emails at the Treasury Department and an arm of the Commerce Department. I mean, it doesn't get the ramifications, don't get any larger than this. A global campaign that introduces a compromise into the networks of public and private organizations through the software supply chain. FireEye said in a blog post on Sunday without naming a specific group for the breach. This compromise is delivered through updates to a widely used IT infrastructure management software, the Orion Network Monitoring Product from Solar Winds. Not sure about that. Nonetheless, if you're introducing products into something like the Treasury Department, you better make sure they don't have bugs, folks, and that's not the case. Um, Worse than most recent, they said, uh, that company sells technology pro products to a who's who list of sensitive targets, State Department, CDC, Naval Information Warfare Systems Command, FBI, all five branches of the U.S. military, 425 corps out of the Fortune 500. It's just stark, folks, when you think about it, no matter what you do in today's day and age. Um, there's too much incentive for people to work, work, work to get around it somehow. And, man, we are really living in a cloud atmosphere 
and you're seeing how even I mean, how much do you think we spend, folks, on the CIA, um, the Treasury Department, cybersecurity, et cetera? And still, we can't keep things where they're just uh, whoever wants to be in there. They're in there looking at emails and so forth. So dicey scenario. Just interesting that it comes on the forefront of when you have Google's YouTube, Gmail, Drive services suffering outages. I mean, I'm on Microsoft. I use OneDrive. I actually spent this weekend, interestingly enough, uh, I have a laptop and I have a desktop. My laptop was having some problems. I had to reformat the whole hard drive. It's up. It's working now. I logged into Microsoft. Microsoft has OneDrive, which is their cloud. You can store your files on there. It's actually pretty interesting that my desktop has all my files on it that are actually stored on the cloud, not really stored internally. You can store them internally as well. But the cool fact is if I go on the road, I pull up my laptop, I actually see almost a mirror image because it's not on my machine that my desktop is actually being saved. My desktop now, folks, and this is Microsoft has made it so seamless that most people don't even realize that when they're saving items on their desktop, they are also being stored on the Microsoft OneDrive cloud in a folder called desktop. The cool part about it is I bring up my laptop. It's the identical computer, essentially. OK, you can store things locally, but identical computer. The backdrop of that is that if you open your computer someday and you don't have access to the cloud and you think that you can access all these files on your local computer, they might not be there. We're seeing some of that with Google Drive, with YouTube, with Gmail, et cetera. Um, and when the world is going there, folks, and we can't keep track of the security, it's only a matter of time, as the, as the phrase goes. It's not if, but when. If we can't keep this stuff safe, that we are heavily relying on cloud and at one point, that cloud might not be accessible. And talk about a um, disruption, to say the least. All right, there's Microsoft shares. We'll jump around to some of the other FANG stocks since we're on it. Got to check in on Tesla, holding well above 600 at 617 right now. Talked about Google, some of the tech stocks pulling back a bit. We'll try and see if we can find that article as well, talking about the EU potentially um, finding. You're talking about 10% of revenue. Now, that's a fine. That's a fine, folks. We always talk about that these companies, the fines that they get fined are just tiddlywinks. They're, they're basically just the cost of doing business. It's pennies on the dollar, if not fractions of pennies on the dollar, or the profits that they're pulling in. You start charging companies 10% of revenue, maybe they'll actually get their act together. But we'll see if that actually plays out. That's in the EU. Jumping around to other stories of what we have going on and what I have pulled up here. AstraZeneca comes out over the weekend. They're buying Alexion for $39 billion as AstraZeneca really cementing themselves um, as one of the big players out there. The acquisition allows us to enhance our presence in immunology. Alexion has established itself as a leader in complement, yeah, as a leader in complement biology, bringing life-changing benefits to patients with rare diseases. Quite a, quite a um, purchase, $39 billion in cash and shares to bolster its position in that immunology and rare diseases. Um, big deals across the board. How about this one I found interesting? Um, Reddit, I've never heard of Dub Smash. Anyone heard of Dub Smash out there? Um, they're going to buy... Dub Smash, a quote unquote rival for TikTok. Man, you want to talk about a competitive space? You're basically competing with the country of China. No, I kid. Um, not anymore, right? Maybe Oracle, maybe Larry Ellison, but you're competing with Facebook, you're competing with Snapchat, Instagram, all the like, but Reddit getting into it, buying Dub Smash. We'll see if they start being a player in that social media um, play. What else do we got? Yeah, here we go. Uh, so this will be a good teaser. We'll talk about it a little bit after the break. But this Friday, folks, a week from today, Tesla will be a member of the S&P 500. And what is going to happen on Friday? Folks, we got quad witching on Friday. And here they go. In addition, so we'll get in the article. Index rebalancing. S&P 500 will rebalance on Friday, one of four days a year it does so. Friday's rebalance will likely see record levels of trading activity due to Tesla's addition. In addition to the rebalancing, several major ETFs will also rebalance on Friday, including the Qs. That's going to be a big one. Um, yeah, and so what happens, folks, you're going to have to pull up Tesla. You're going to have weekly options, monthly options, quarterly options, uh, rebalancing, yearly, end of the year. Excuse me. Remarkable when you think this is the last full trading week, folks. 
before Christmas. We come into December 18th, Friday, third Friday of the month, right? That is expiration. And then we're a week off from Christmas. And the next two weeks, folks, they're going to be half weeks, if that. You got Christmas falling on a Friday. You got New Year's Day falling on a Friday. And then we'll be back for the first full week starting in 2021 on January 4th. Remarkable. We're talking about January 4th. All right. What else we got going on? We still got some earnings going on. Let's see what we got. All right. We have. Here we go. Lennar is going to be on Wednesday, the home builder. They've been on fire recently. We're also going to get FedEx and General Mills on Thursday. FedEx, talk about a tear. These companies delivering packages. Just for some context. There's a chart for you on FedEx. Uh, and we also, the big one of this week, probably going to be Nike, which we get on Friday. We also get Darden Restaurants on Friday as well. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back in three minutes. Back in the day, I joined Hotel California in 2006, and like many of you, was drawn in by, Bam! as well as, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. You see, I believe that everything in life happens for us, not to us, and Tom ignited the fire within me to want to learn how to master the markets. So how did I go from knowing nothing about technical analysis to becoming the number one market timer for the S&P 500 in 2018 and the number two market timer in 2019? Simply put, I hired coaches with a proven track record, which led me to a whole new set of tools that I created to interpret the message of buyers and sellers. I would love the opportunity to teach you this award-winning set of tools and to help you improve your market timing. You can test drive my newsletter service, Mastering Probabilities, for the next 30 days with no risk to you. Plus, you'll gain access to archive workshops that'll take you step-by-step -step through my system. Sign up today by going to the homepage of TFNN.com and selecting Mastering Probability in the newsletter tab. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Introducing Primal Edge. Today, it's even more important to take a supplement that complements your health. Primal Edge is specifically formulated to boost your immune system and help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Our early ancestors found all their nutritional requirements in the wild environment. But today, our food sources don't contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that we need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated humic and fulvic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, without them, life cannot exist. That's right, Ellen. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. Primal Edge, just $89 exclusively at TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. I got a chart of crude up here. Up right now, 76 cents, climbing higher, 47.34. We're looking at 15-minute bars. And before I jump over to this article, folks, there's the headline. The Essex boys have nine traders hit a gusher with negative oil to $660 million. 
Got to talk about it, folks. Tiger Dollars, they're running through this Sunday. You want to talk about a return on your investment? You can get up to a 40% bonus on your purchase, whether you're subscribing to the Gold Report, you're already a subscriber, the opening call, Rocket Equities and Options, Path of Least Resistance, Mastering Probability. We got Fibonacci 24-7, our man Larry Pesavento coming up next. Uh, all of that, folks, you can use Tiger Dollars. They never expire. They're good for any good they're good for any TFNN newsletter, webinar, service, three levels you can purchase it from. That runs through next Sunday. I encourage you to get those Tiger dollars. Now, back to this article before we wrap it up. So this is the article from Bloomberg out there. Looks like December 10th. Okay, so last week. Now, the part I'm going to focus on real quick is what they talk about and how they did this. So what the trade was is a traded settlement or a TAS, as they call it, TAS Market Profile Scanner. I'll give them a quick plug. Not not related, but made me think about it. Traded settlement, uh, an agreement to buy or sell a future at whatever price ends up at the closing bell. Well, geez, you know, if you were the one making um, traded settlement agreements to be buying oil at the end of April 20th, folks, you were doing very well. So to fast forward, check this out if you're a Bloomberg subscriber. If you're not, they got great information, folks. Check it out. Um, and what they go over here is that they actually made too much money. If the group had made $7 million that day instead of almost $700 million, they'd probably be celebrating. But the size of their winnings with the backgrounds, political pressure, yeah, they're under the heat lamp, folks, as you have Democrats and Republicans talking about did they commit a felony. Nonetheless, you can't manipulate stock markets, folks. We all that know that. But they go through and hear that there's only basically one case that that's ever actually come to fruition where they had emails of people talking about manipulating stop gate, the, the stock price. Uh, nonetheless, great article, $660 million. And watch out, folks. Volatility in that crude market to the upside right now. Stay tuned. We got Larry Pesavento. He's coming up next, folks, with Trade What You See. Live programming all day at TFNN. Be right back.